And here you see Elston getting some support and Stoke from inside the Temple of Stoke as he gets ready to drop into semifinals run. Jared Elston versus Torstein Horgmo. As you said, Pat, definitely not rookies, but newcomers to the tour. Bend versus Norway. Yeah, it's amazing too. And you gotta say, there's a 12 year each difference here. So we'll see how that impacts their, uh, their runs as well. Jared opened it up today too, dropping first all day. Oh, oh wow. Holding on with the double backy right there, wondering when that was gonna happen. There he is, switch. Cab five follow up right there. Again, holding on. You know, I think that this shows if you are dropping against Torstein Horgmo, you know you have to send it from the very top. I gotta say, this is the, easily the best run so far of the day. Don't want to jinx him. Oh, ah. first the announcer. <laughs> I know, and I was wondering, wondering when somebody was gonna go upside down off of that. You know, he really came firing out of the gates, and I think that's very emblematic of his style of riding. It's very powerful, it's very raw, and it's really energetic. He's got that young energy. Torstein's the, the uh, he's been in the game for a long time. We know his history, we know what he's done, uh, but I think Jared wants it. He wants it bad. He's coming in very hot and not holding back. Ooh, that was chaotic. Uh, what up, Bend, Oregon? And so we go back up to the top for Torstein Horgmo, consummate veteran in snowboarding, has done just about everything. Did the first triple cork back in 2010, changing the face of freestyle snowboarding. And now here in semifinals at the Natural Selection Tour, Jackson. Well, it's great to see the newcomers make their presence known. Adds a variety, adds a spice, brings more personalities into the mix. Torstein, of course, a lot of people know. They've seen him on the X Games. They've seen him in the international competitions. Seen him on video. We saw Torstein seriously open it up in the earlier heats against Travis. I want to see if he has, I mean, we know he has more to give, but is he going to put it into this first round? Torstein is one of those guys, too, that he can, like, lock in on competitor mode and just turn it on. We saw Sage do that. We've seen Travis do that. And he is one of those individuals that has that kind of turbo mode. Yeah, absolutely. And from run to run to run, Torstein definitely improved upon the previous efforts every single time he dropped in already today in the quarterfinals. Big frontside seven. That... Oh man, getting eaten up by the snakes. But that first landing we've seen, it has that little bit of a roller in the landing. Uh, looked like Torstein kind of caught it perfect. It bucked some people in the previously, and he's hanging on really well. Well, you're hearing the riders get to the bottom. They're definitely winded, you know. It's uh, whether or not the elasticity of the legs takes a toll. He's definitely already got one more run under his belt than Jared. Ooh, he's catching the knuckle a little bit on that back seven. You could hear it too, that one. Sounds like kind of got him, got him pretty well. A little bit of an oomph coming out of him. Well, I had a takeaway from the women's semifinals where the two ladies who advanced took the rider's right line. The fresher landings, fresher course, and I'm wondering if we're gonna see that play out here in the uh, semifinals for the men. Torstein definitely feeling it right now. Yeah, taking a little bit of a breather, getting things situated before continuing down the lower part of the course. Yeah, that one left a dent. I think uh, looks like the goggles are up. He's just making his way down on this one. Well, we don't know exactly what's going on here, what impact that had on Torstein for the remainder of the event. Yeah, you gotta say that Elston's gonna advance out of this run as far as he's gonna take the advantage going into run two of the semifinal. Yes, I think Jared is probably sitting there feeling like, okay, I'm heading into run two, but pending how Torstein is feeling after this run, again, you know. You still, can't count, exactly. you can't count Torstein out, exactly. no matter what. 
Oh, yeah, I'm good. I just need myself in the face pretty good. Oh, okay. Just like on that seven. Yeah. Oh man. Here, Torstein talking about hitting his chin with his knee. That is one of the more painful things you can do on a landing. All right, well, here's Elson kicking it off with that huge, huge backside, or I'm sorry, backside, double wildcat and landing really at the bottom of what that landing had left to give. Coming back around, or switching around to a switch takeoff, giving us a cab five. You know, he looks so at home on this course. He looks really playful. He looks like he's having the most fun. I agree. Yeah, and when he gets to the bottom, it's like similar to Blake Paul, where it's like he's not as winded as some of the other riders we've seen. I really like that comparison because I was just thinking normally previous to this, I wouldn't have kind of made a lot of comparisons between Jared and Blake's riding necessarily. And now watching this, I'm like, oh, there's a lot more uh, kind of similarities, different there's styles, but you know, similar ethos. Definitely different styles, but a, like a lightness to it. Yes. It's good to see uh, now that everybody's turning up the heat, there are some bigger and bigger tricks going down off of that first hit, adding a lot of risk uh, to, to each of their runs by starting off with such big moves. Where would you give the edge on the uh, seven tail or the double back? I would say double back. I think I would agree with you right there. I mean, it was the first time I was wondering when we were going to see a double. And there we saw that more consequential fall from Torstein, unfortunately, going down, just kind of not hitting the landing exactly where he wanted to. And Decided to take another one. And yeah. just like Jared said. What up, said, Bend Oregon? <laughs> big shouts to Bend Oregon. And we're going to go back to the top where we are ready for Jared Elston out of Bend Oregon to drop in for his second and final run of semis. Yes, riders, stand by. Five, four, three. Well, knowing that Torstein still to drop and wants to bring it to a tiebreaker. I think Jared's going to pull out all the stops here. He's got nothing to lose. That's an exciting place to be for any competitor and dangerous to the rest of the field if you have nothing left to lose. Taking a bit more style onto the double back right there. Now we switch. Another cap five, solid poke. Oh. To the danger zone right there. That seems to be uh, taking a lot of riders out. But as Salema was saying, a fall doesn't necessarily mean you don't win the run. Totally. I think it just communicates to Torstein that the door is left open. I didn't even know that little takeoff was there, that little uh, goalpost between the trees. I, I don't think I don't think he did either. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many features on this course and so many new ones from last year. Not that Jared was here to experience it year one, but just that's a perfect example is pretty much anywhere you can go in between the gates of this course, you'll find something to hit. I know, a little uh, popper right there, a little wedge in between the trees. That's Jared Elston. Good, Tommy. Didn't know to know that. Oh. Wow. Tommy Baham. I mean, Jeff, you have a lot of familiarity with this area. Um, as we look at Torsten Horkmo as he gets ready to drop, how steep is this? I think sometimes the GoPro angle, which is amazing, you don't even get a sense exactly of how gnarly steep this terrain is. Yeah, th it's pretty steep. It's not like necessarily the steepest terrain on the mountain, but it's also not the type of terrain that you would be doing full pulls from top to bottom of this face. Like when we would ride this, whether it's pr before there was a lift there or, or now with the Teton lift, like you're, you're stopping and you're picking out features and, and, and doing that. You know, it's, it's rare that unless it's maybe 
first round on a powder day that you're blasting from top to bottom. So for, to put the athletes in a situation where they're, we're trying to get them from the top to the bottom, hit as many features as possible without stopping in these variable conditions, it just goes to show what, what uh, heavy athletes they really are. Absolutely, and it, from the Barbie or the on-slope angle, you're actually starting to see the elevation or the drops, how much height these riders are dropping from, which in turn impacts the speed, brings you a lot of heat coming out of these landings. Not quite as clean as his first front seven. It is good to see Torstein back up, though. That was a heavy hit on his first run, enough for him to essentially just barely get down, I mean, just get down and not, not pull any more tricks. So it is good to see him back up and going for it. Definitely a testament to him as a rider and, you know, just as an individual that he's back out there. Well, and, and you notice all the riders are wearing helmets. It's interesting, when you knee your face on a landing, the helmet actually helps you with the impact on that and stuff. And that is something every rider has encountered at some point. And it's like, you think about a knee injury, you don't think a knee injury is gonna affect your face. My jaw's still out of whack from kneeing myself in the face 20 some odd years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Torstein made his presence known. He's going to be going up to bald face. Again, I'm not a judge, but I think it's safe to say right there that Torstein did not have the semifinals he was hoping for. And that's a really great point, Pat, because all of these riders we're watching today have punched their ticket, as we said, to bald face. You know, last year, with all the restrictions around travel, things were a little bit different, but now the Natural Selection Tour riders will earn points all the way through every stop. Man. Oh. Oh. <laughs> nice work, Shane. Thanks, man. And let's check out the recap. We have Jared on course first. I agree with what you said, Pat. Not as clean as his first one, maybe not as big, but still putting it down uh, and then going right into that cab five. But that is that exact zone on that landing is where a lot of riders are starting to have trouble. I actually thought he cleaned up the double backflip and put more style on it. But from that angle, I realized he wasn't grabbing. Yeah, obviously the photographers didn't tell him to wear a light-colored kit so he doesn't blend in with the backgrounds here. He's going for the win, not the photo. There's a good-looking frontside three. Riding away, and just like with many of the riders, as soon as they land, trying to hit those brakes. All right, here we move on to Torstein's first hit, that frontside seven. And again, his frontside seven on the first run was more clean, more stylish. Got a rebate on that backside seven. Caught the landing in a little bit better spot, but still wasn't able to ride it away. And how are there still features that haven't been hit yet? That's great to see. Well, if you're in the 10 right now, you gotta be looking at that landing at that one jump and avoiding it. Get it, dude. Get it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Holy smokes. Wow, can't believe that. Childhood hero, dude. Thank you so much. Oh, much love, brother. Oh, 